and welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, May 24th, 2019. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. There has been a decline in church attendance and re-strategizing is seen as necessary to rebuild a positive image of churches across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. These were among some of the issues highlighted at this year's 6th Annual Memorial Lecture held last evening at the French's House as part of activities to celebrate the 55th anniversary of the Bishop's College Kingstown. The lecture was delivered by Onika Morgan of the St. George's Anglican Church, who spoke on the topic, The Church at a Crossroad, Choosing the Critical Path. Morgan pointed out that the decline in church attendance today is more than half the figure compared to decades ago. It's a drop of over 50% in about a 30-year period. Um, in around 1980, we had 40,682 members, according to the census. And more, uh, more recent um, number is approximately 17,000. Are we using the opportunities presented to us by social media and the advancing technology? This session is being streamed, but what about our general online presence? How feasible are the plans to put the prayer book online? Noting that 200-year-old St. George's Cathedral need urgent renovations, amounting to some $23.7 million, Morgan questioned the relationship of the church and the state and how social issues are handled, especially when there are opposing views. They have to determine to what extent each embraces the spiritual and historical values and come to some resolutions. The apparent impasse further symbolizes the conflict in the limitations of the church-state relationship in the present and future debates of national, political, and sociocultural issues. These may include the church's stance on same-sex marriages, partisan politics and policies, the decriminalization of marijuana and government policies, which potentially widen the gap. This is where we are. Morgan told the audience that a church is referred to as the people and not the building. She suggested that measures be put in place to get the people more involved with the business of the church so they in turn will benefit from what the church has to offer. Choosing the critical path is relative to a number of different factors in the ex internal and external environment. Individual and collective resources leadership, needs and priorities, they contribute to the importance placed on one road or the next. The strategies have to be dynamic, practical, and inclusive so we do not find ourselves just working within a literal framework and collecting parts along the way. Or we do not find ourselves getting stuck at the crossroads. Meanwhile, a report which was compiled by a UK consultant on the community needs in SVG has emphasized the need for more collaboration between NGOs, including churches, to address some of the social ills in the country. The report was commissioned by the Kingstown Baptist Church for the development of an action plan for its outreach programs. Pauline Everett, who compiled the report, spoke to SVG TV News on her mission here, which she said included holding meetings with various church leaders on the role they can play to help address some of the, these social issues. Community action they're going to do is going to complement what their programs. We are not going to work in opposition. We want to support. Um, we want to, um, you know, enhance. Not necessarily just enhance, but to. Uh, help to fulfil what they want to do. So when we were talking with the Department of Health and we spoke to the Nutrition Department, they gave us some, some ideas of where their priorities are. So that what we will go away and do now is that we're going to be looking at some of those priorities and what we can start to do um, in the short term 
will then produce medium long plans and long longer term plans. Pastor of the Kingston Baptist Church, Cecil Richards, said they will be rolling out some of the outreach programs soon, which were recommended in the report. We're going to get the easy win for us. There, there are going to be some things that we can do, like for example, uh, that we can practically start immediately the children after school program, um, the, the children reading program, programs related to development of children, matters of mental health, mental stability and mental support, emotional issues related to the children. That is not going to be so heavy with respect to capital resources needed for that. But the, the thing that concerns me is this misnomer or notion um, that all churches exist for uh, it's basically to condemn people to hell, to, to, to talk about judgment and um, uh, preach fire and brimstone stone sermons and then collect people's money and build big buildings. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that um, because it, 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 it is a caricature of what church is and I want to debunk that whole myth. Members of the Spiritual Baptist community will celebrate the 2019 National Spiritual Baptist Day with a match and worship service this Sunday, May 26th. The procession will leave the Peace Memorial Hall for Victoria Park at 1 p.m., accompanied by the RSVG Police Force Band. The worship service at the Victoria Park is expected to commence around 2 p.m. The theme of this year's celebration is Dwelling Together in Unity. The sermon at Sunday's worship service will be delivered by His Eminence, the Most Reverend Melford Pompey, recently enthroned Archbishop of the Spiritual Baptist Archdiocese. National Spiritual Baptist Day was legislated by the Parliament of SVG in March 2002. The country is said to be making some progress in the fight against diabetes and other non-communicable diseases, but more still needs to be done. So says Minister of Health Luke Brown at a news conference today held to update the public on a recent trip to Geneva where he participated in the 72nd session of the World Health Assembly. The Assembly brought together health officials from around the world and presented the opportunity for the Minister to speak on SVG's primary health care system and its response to diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. It also created an opportunity for SVG to lobby for Taiwan's participation in the World Health Organization's annual forum. Minister Brown said part of the presentation by SVG's delegation was in relation to the building of capacity both in terms of infrastructure and the training of human resources, which is important in the fight against diabetes and other NCDs. He highlighted a capacity building project which has these objectives in mind says that we need to get some equipment we need to have training for staff so we could take an integrated approach and this capacity building project that I referred to before is a project that is helping us to do just that investing in important technology at the clinic level and also giving our officers opportunities to be trained abroad and several sessions of training or courses of training have already been conducted and we we the project is ongoing, it's a three-year project, launched in 2018 with a concluding date in 2021. So we outlined the diabetes situation. We showed that in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the prevalence of diabetes based on the research was at 10.3%. So this is a big problem and this is where the range is between, I think, six, somewhere 6.9% and 14.3% in some selected Caribbean countries. So we are at 10.3% or thereabouts. And this suggests that this is a big problem for us to tackle, and we have tackled it. And we tackled it in a way that is consistent with recommendations coming from international organizations. Minister Brown said more work still needs to be done in the fight against NCDs and that the ministry is examining a campaign to encourage more physical activity among the populace, noting that the school system is the best place to start. He said though many schools have a physical education program, it is not sufficient. It's a start. You have a ready-made institution that is available, that has instructors even in physical activity but the truth of the matter is the approach that some schools take to, to physical activity and physical education baffles me 
you know, I remember that when I was going to school, as much as I used to play, and I used to possibly compensate for the limited PE sessions by playing morning, noon, and night, so to speak. The PE is a once-in-a-week activity. You know, I've seen literature which is encouraging persons to walk, and including young students to walk or run a mile per day. You know, for us, PE was just a, a once-in-a-week activity, and the punishment that we had if we weren't well-behaved is that no PE. <laughs> and then some teachers in our school system treat PE as if it's well just a simply, simply just an academic subject. So they sit down in the classroom and talk about PE. That is not, that is not what is necessary. That is not what is going to help us with physical literacy. That is not what is going to help us with movement. And that's certainly not what is going to help us with our fight against non-communicable diseases. Minister Brown further stated that one of the NCD's risk factors is diet and the amount of sugar one consumes. He said work must be done to protect children from such products. At all and, well, and drinks around well, schools. Not around school, in the school itself. Well, in, well, I don't even think that they, apart from what we do in consultation with the Ministry of Education and the school feeding program, I don't think that they, their restrictions on what a talk shop might be able to sell, for instance. And we have to move in that direction because when we, when we make these things available, then our children might grew up thinking that, yeah, this is acceptable, this is second nature, this is normal. They might not have an idea, they might see that they're looking a little chubby, and you know chubby is the name of one of the offensive, offensive products as well. They might see they're looking a little chubby, but they don't know that this is tied to their consumption patterns, you know? Because one of the things, exercise is one thing, but you're actually not going to experience the greatest gains for your health unless you, you look at the sh kind of sugars that you that you drink. I mean, I know that persons perhaps wouldn't be perfect on this score, but let's try to systematically reduce the amount of added sugars that we consume. And I'm sure that you'd see benefits. I have seen benefits, you know, by taking this approach. And I don't consider myself to be unique on this matter at all. Watershed management plays a critical role in disaster preparedness and national security. Sources Forestry Supervisor Cosmos McLeod as he spoke on the role the Forestry Department is playing in maintaining the forested areas of SVG and why this natural resource is of critical importance to life. Speaking from the Montreal area during a forest hike yesterday with members of the Sustainable Development Unit, McLeod said a well-managed forest has many benefits including flood reduction. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be too much because what we do, we try to we try to encourage retention storage at the top because when you have trees, what the trees does, it slows down the impact of the rain on the soil and it allows more for infiltration and percolation. Infiltration when the water enters the soil, percolation is when it goes to the subsoil further down. So there's a greater yes, there's a greater retention storage when you have a well managed forest, and a well managed forest means that you have three distinct layers. So you have the top vegetation, the middle, and then you have the, the understory. So it really holds the water and keeps it. So it reduces the water at a slow rate into the, into the streams, etc. So that you wouldn't really have an excessive amount. McLeod said their work in the forested areas of SVG also assists in preventing damage to infrastructures downstream. The valley where it forms the Yamb River, which drains right down into the Agal International Airport. So it's of critical importance that we manage these two sub-watersheds because the drainage from these watersheds ends up at the airport. And we want to be able to reduce the flow in terms of times of flood, etc. Because even in terms of disaster and being ready for disaster, we have to ensure that um, planes can come in and leave in the event that you have to evacuate people and all those sort of things. So it's, it's a matter also of national security that you do upper watershed management. Because once your watershed is properly managed, then it is basically reducing the downstream impact. Hence the amount of money government have to spend in repairing infrastructure and bridges and roads and uh, very much so, opportunity costs. So that is quite important. The forestry supervisor added that the data collected by the department is used by engineers to construct major infrastructures such as the Argyle International Airport. And also, when in terms of watershed management, what we do, we measure the, the discharge of the rivers 
on a monthly basis in some areas, especially in the vulnerable areas. So we can have information that we can produce now so that engineers can use that information mm -hmm. to determine the size of the bridges that they want to construct. Okay. So in other words, you'll be able to predict the, what we call the maximum runoff. Okay. So, useful in right, very much so. So it's not a matter of having too much water going down. We would already build the infrastructure to accommodate what we perceive to be the maximum flow. And then we can also predict um, direct runoff over a certain time period using hydrographs, like the 40-year period, a 60-year period, a 100-year period flood. So we can predict that as well, based on scientific information. Okay. So it can help us to be a little bit more ready in terms of disaster life. Mm -hmm. So forestry management is quite critical in almost every aspect of life. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan, His Excellency Dr. Joshe Joseph Wu, will pay a total visit to SVG as part of his official tour of the Caribbean. His Excellency Dr. Joshe Wu will be in the state from Wednesday, April 29th to Thursday, May 30th, and will be accompanied by his spouse, Mrs. Wu, along with other senior officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan, including the Director General of the Department of Latin American and Caribbean Affairs, Ambassador Tari Yu. During the official visit, Foreign Minister Wu will tour several places of interest in SVG and will sign a memorandum of understanding for the procurement of vehicles to assist the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, followed by a tour of the terminal building at the Argyle International Airport, which was funded by the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan. The Republic of China and St. Vincent and the Grenadines established diplomatic ties on August 15, 1981. Over the years, SVG has enjoyed fruitful relations in areas such as people-to-people -people exchanges, education, health, agriculture, infrastructure development, and technical cooperation. Hospitality and culinary arts students who are working towards an associate degree at the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College, the SVGCC, now have an opportunity to go on to attain a bachelor's degree from the University of Southern Caribbean, USC. This follows the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding and MNU an MOU on Thursday between the SVG Community College and the USC. President of USC, Dr. Hilary Bowman, Director of SVGCC, Nigel Scott, and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Michael Burke, signed the MOU. Director of the SVGCC, Nigel Scott, called the signing of the MOU a perfect blend. The MOU was signed to formalize and promote educational exchanges between the two institutions. The director of SVGCC said the idea for the collaboration came about when Chief Nutritionist Andrew Robin and Chairperson of the Family and Consumer Science USC, Dr. Claudette Mitchell, approached him with the suggestion that steps should be taken to ensure swifter completion of studies for students at the college in the diet, Dietics and Nutrition program. And so Dr. Mitchell went back to, to Trinidad and over a period of time, this three plus two was, was arrived at, where the students would spend two years doing the associate degree in hospitality or culinary arts, and an additional year in St. Vincent doing some of those additional courses in anatomy and physiology, biochemistry, etc. So that at the end of three years, they would be prepared to move into the final two years at USC to complete um, the bachelor's degree in dietetics as well as in family and consumer, consumer studies. We think this is a, a perfect blend. It, it shortens the time away from home and it also immediately has a cadre of um, possible applicants, those who have completed our applied associate degree in hospitality studies and in culinary arts. Many of them we know will go into initially the tourism and hospitality industry, but we know that those are not the only fields. And the Ministry of, of Health and St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in need of dietitians because we, we suffer significantly from in our country from a number of lifestyle diseases, the non-communicable diseases that have to do with how we eat and how we, we manage our own lifestyle and our own health. Scott said it is his hope that students of the college and others take full advantage of the opportunity to pursue higher education through the MOU signed with the University of Southern Caribbean.
as Mrs. Adams said a while ago, the college here at St. Vincent Community College, we are always looking for partnerships that would help Vincentians, that would help our students to, to create a path towards a, a better future and a brighter future. And we saw this as the perfect opportunity to partner with USC on this initiative. We are, look forward, we are looking forward to our students and Vincentians generally taking advantage of this opportunity. Um, this year alone, we have over 70 students in the first year of the hospitality program alone at the college. And so we have a number of graduates already, plus students who are current students who are coming through the system who will be in a position to take advantage of this uh, memorandum of understanding that we are signing today. I'm pleased for Dr. Mitchell's persistence, and she has been very persistent. And so I've gotten many calls and many emails as to where are we, how are we doing, um, can we push, push forward, can we push ahead, haven't heard from you for a while. Very persistent, and it is largely because of her persistence that we are here today. So thank you very much, Dr. Mitchell, for being on my case. The University of the Southern Caribbean is owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is located in Trinidad and Tobago with six other sites around the Caribbean. USC is accredited by two accrediting bodies, namely AAA of the United States and the Accrediting Council of Trinidad and Tobago. A two-day national education forum will be held here next week under the theme Education Leadership empower lead inspire the forum which will be held on wednesday and thursday is part of the leadership and accountability component of the oecs education support project the oesp that is financed by the global partnership for education prime minister dr rav gonzalez will deliver the keynote address other addresses will come from the Minister of Education, Sinclair Prince, the Chief Education Officer, Acting Elizabeth Walker, the head and head of the OECS Education Development Management Unit, Cesira Simon. At the forum, practicum work of some 30 principals who participated in the six-month UWI School Leadership Online course will also be highlighted. The showcase of the practicum work is the culminating activity of the online course under the leadership and accountability component of the OECS Education Support Project. Chief Education Officer Elizabeth Walker highlighted the work done so far under the project. So the components that were looked at on the leadership and the activities and programs that were realized were, were one, six months training of 30 primary principals. Then there was the handbook, a handbook for school leadership to guide school leadership activities, the appraisal instrument for principals, and a revised job description for principals. And as we, we end the activities during that six months would be the National Education Forum, which we said earlier would be on the 28th and 29th of Participants at the forum will include primary and secondary school principals, education officers, lecturers from the community college, and other stakeholders. 100 persons are expected to attend the forum, which will be held next Tuesday and Wednesday, and the chief education officer said it is hoped that the participants will develop their leadership skills and bring benefits to their students and the education system. The research has said and continues to show that leadership is key to the effectiveness of institutions and the quality delivery of programs at any in, uh, educational institutions. So we are hoping that coming out of the forum it would create an awareness for the participants who are not a part of the um, course activity. They would be aware of, of some of the content material that was delivered at um, during the six months period. Also the persons who were trained, we are hoping that they would develop um, communities of practice so they can share, they would be networking and they would share the information with their colleagues. And at the end of the eight, it would um, be to the benefit of the students 
in their schools, in their communities, and in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a whole. Senior Education Officer Dixton Finley also agreed that leadership is key for the growth and development of the education system. He said four principals will have an additional opportunity to sharpen their skills capacity in this area. We also have four persons from the program for principals who are going to continue another six weeks of training to be trainer of trainers so that they can go and now train other principals and other teachers. So what we want to do is to um, improve the management of schools. That is the leadership and management of schools because as the CEO said, once you have good leadership, good teaching, and we provide the, that environment for our students, we expect the average child to do well. And, and that's important. So leadership, quality, quality teaching, the average student. The Girl Guides Association of SVG will commence a series of activities to mark the beginning of the association celebrations of SVG's 40th anniversary of independence. This Saturday, the 25th of May 2019, the association will host its annual dance festival at the Peace Memorial Hall in Kingstown under the theme Celebrating We at 40. The festival will begin at 6 p.m. and will feature dances from Bim Bims, Brownie Guides, Girl Guides, and Ranger Guides from across SVG. Additionally, the dance festival will be accentuated by choral speeches to toast the beauty, strength, achievement, and resilience of Incensions and Hyrona. Chief Commission of the Association, Laura Brown, said the association is continuing its quest to empower girls and young women to meaningfully contribute to the development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and reignite a, spiritual, a spirit of national pride among the citizenry. The general public is invited to join the celebrations and to follow the monthly activities that will be hosted by the association in celebration of the 40th year of independence for St. Vincent and the Grenadines.